right. Welcome, everyone. This is Brother Doug. Um, that was my sister Shushana singing Are You Teachable? Today, we will be continuing our uh, Torah study, Genesis, Better Sheath, Chapter 22. Um, I have a special study that we're going to do at some point next week, but I got to do some more research for that. Um, so we're going to do Genesis Bereshit 22 today. I will be reading from the Aramaic Targum, and I also be looking at the Masoretic version also, but I will be mainly reading from the Targum. So here we go. We go to Genesis 22. I got a type of interlinear I'm going to be using from safaria.com. Um, so this is a Jewish website where they try to use the Masoretic Hebrew to match up with the English translation of the Targum to try to give like an interlinear type of feel to it. So let's see here, we got, uh, I think I'll try Jonathan Targum, Genesis, and we're gonna go to chapter 22 here. And let's see here, here we go. Come on, where's the English here? All right, there we go. And for some reason, hold on. There, let me see here. Okay, I don't like the way they got that. The order that is a little weird on that site. So let me, I'll just read from the Septuagint. That was a little weird. All right, so Genesis 22. Here we go. And after it came to pass after these things that Elohim did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham and he said behold or Abraham answered lo I am here and he said take your son the beloved one whom you have loved Isaac and go into the high land and offer him there for a whole burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you of Abram rose up in the morning and saddled his donkey and he took with him two servants and Isaac his son, and having split wood for a whole burnt offering, he arose and departed and came to the place of which Elohim spoke to him. On the third day, Abraham, having lifted up his eyes, saw that the place is far off, and Abram said to his servants, Sit ye here with the donkey, and I and the lad will proceed thus far, and having worshipped, we will return to you. And Abram took the wood of the whole burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took into his hands both the fire and the knife, and the two went together. And Isaac and Abraham his father, and he said, What is it, son? So Isaac's now talking to Abraham, and Abraham says, what is it? He said, behold, the fire and the wood, where is the sheep, or the Masoretic text it would say lamb, for a whole burnt offering? And Abraham said, Yahuwah, or Elohim, will provide himself a sheep for a whole burnt offering, my son. And both having gone together, now let me just check something real quick, because, okay, it is Elohim. All right. And my son and both having gone together and came to the place where Elohim spoke of to him and where Abraham built the altar and laid the wood on it, having bound the feet of Isaac, his son, together, he laid on the altar upon the wood and Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son. And the angel of Yahuwah called him out of heaven, said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Behold, I am here. And he said, Lay not your hand upon the child, neither do anything to him. For now I know that you fear yeah, you fear Elohim, and for your sake you have not spared your beloved son. And for my sake. So now the angel of Yahuwah, which, which of us that actually know that that's referring to Yahushua. So it's kind of interesting here. It says, For my sake. You have not spared your beloved son. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and beheld and lo, a ram caught by his horns in a plant of Sabak. 
And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a whole burnt offering in the place of Isaac, his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Yahuwah has seen for that they might say to today in the mountain, Yahuwah was seen. Very interesting. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. An angel of Yahuwah called Abraham the second time out of heaven. I have sworn by myself. So now the angels call himself Yahuwah. I have sworn by myself, says Yahuwah, because you have done this thing and on my account have not spared your beloved son. Again, on his account, the angel of Yahuwah's account. Surely, Baruch, I will Barak you and multiply and I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is the shore of the sea, and your seed shall inherit the cities of their enemies. And in your seed shall the nations of the earth be Baruch, because you have hearkened to my voice. So now the angel of Yahuwah is claiming that Abraham hearkened to his voice. It's interesting. And Abraham returned to his servants, and they arose and went together to the well of the oath. And Abraham dwelt at the well of the oath. And it came to pass after these things that it was reported to Abraham, saying, Behold, Melka, or Melka herself too has borne sons to Nahor, or Nahor, your brother, and Uz, the firstborn, and Baup, Baux, his brother, and Kamual, the father of the Syrians, and Chazad, and Azaz. And Faldez and Yaldath and Bathual and Bathual begot Rebecca. These are eight sons, which Melka, or probably Malka, more specific, more uh, more correctly from the Paleo would probably be Malka, bore to Nahor, the brother of Abraham, and his concubine, whose name was Re Reuma, she also bore Tabak. And Ta'am and Tokos and Mocha. It's interesting. It's an interesting name there. Wonder what the Masoretic Hebrew has there for that name. Or Ma'aka. Okay. That sounds a little bit more specific. Okay. So very interesting. So we have Abraham's family is now getting bigger now. He's got his his brother is starting to get more children. Um Okay, so Milka is now bearing, I think it said eight children in total to Nahor. So very interesting. But what I really took away from this chapter was um, the angel of Yahuwah appeared and um, the difference is that instead of your only son, your beloved son. So to us that actually read extra biblical books like the Ascension of Isaiah, we get more of a messianic type of feeling when we read something like that that says you're you're beloved you you have not spared your beloved son on my account and uh the the title in the ascension of isaiah for yahusha is the beloved so this was like a foreshadowing for yahuwah and the angel of yahuwah yahusha saying to abraham you have not you have not withheld your beloved son just like yahuwah loved us so much he didn't withhold his beloved the beloved from giving him for our sakes in our place so there's a lot of spiritual um foreshadowing to the brit hadashah the new testament from this one chapter you have um you know for our sakes he did not withhold his only beloved son um and for his for the father's sake for the son's sake Abraham did not withhold Isaac. He trusted the father. And another thing I wanted to talk about was that um, in certain translations, it would say tempt, that he tempted Abraham. It actually should be tried or tested. Um, I looked the other day into the original Greek of the Septuagint. It's actually supposed to be tried. These translators mistranslated as tempt. He tempted Abraham. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here we go here. Um, if we go to the Greek Old Testament with Strong's numbers, we go all the way to verse 1 here, in chapter 22. The number one definition actually will be, let's see if I can find where it is. 
Usually it's like right next to the Theos. Uh, here we go, Theos, and then the next word here. Here we go. So this Greek word here in Thayer's lexicon, which is the Greek equivalent to the Masoretic text saying tempt, it actually says test, if this stupid program, there we go. All right, so this Greek word that says perazo means to try whether a thing can be done, to try, to make trial of, test. So tempt is not even the main definition of that word. So, and it is a big problem when they translate as tempt because there's other verses in scripture that say Yahuwah does not tempt in the New Testament. You'll actually see um, where Yahuwah does not tempt us. He does not give us, directly tempt us and um, even the prayer, the master's prayer, it says, you know, do not deliver us into temptation. So, I mean, th th that to me, that was a big deal. When I saw that in the Halu scriptures, I saw in the Masoretic um, Bibles, and even the English translation of Septuagint put tempt, even though it says trial. It's supposed to be to try. So, that's just something I wanted to let people know what that original word means. So, um, just so, because... For me, I know it was a problem. I used to like, I used to have a problem with that. I'd be like, uh, what the heck? He's not, he doesn't tempt us. Why does it say tempt? So that, that used to be like a, a contradiction in my opinion. And I would, I would like really get stuck on that. So anyway, I just wanted to say that, um, um, Sister Shushana, if you got anything you wanted to bring uh, up? Yeah, there's a prophecy in that group of scriptures that you read. Um, that says Abraham's seed would inherit the gates of their enemies. And I believe that has already taken place. And they have now lost these uh, gates of their enemies to the Gentiles. Um, and the gates to the enemies would, would have been places like the Panama Canal and um, the Suez Canal. These are places that Israelites have owned and now yeah. no longer own. Yeah, the Philistines, when they, uh, when they defeated the Philistines in King David's timeline, they took over some of their land. Um, uh, the whole land of Canaan that was promised to them, they technically, you know, dispossessed their enemies there. Um, yeah, but that, that didn't last very long. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think, yeah, it was partially fulfilled because of their, um, I guess, stony heart. It wasn't felt fully fulfilled, and that's something that I guess will happen in the millennium again. You'll have uh, him have us take over the rest of the lands and have us possess the gates of our enemies. So, I would uh, say it was fully fulfilled, but only for a time. Hmm. It was it was fulfilled and then it was lost because hmm. the people didn't follow Yahuwah. If they had followed Yahuwah when they had these Barakas, there would be no problem. He would have left it like it is or like it was, <laughs> but they did not follow Yahweh, and so they lost, they lost the gates of their enemies. But he promised it to Abraham, and it was fulfilled as a promise to Abraham, only it was not left to be fulfilled uh, for very long because of the people. That's all I want to say. Yeah. And what I noticed too is the next verse when it talks about um, because of, um, let's see, it says, you're, all the nations of the earth and your seed shall be Baruch. So you have the all nations of the earth, the Gentiles will be Baruch in his seed. And we know Galatians 3.29 says, he who is in Messiah is the seed of Abraham. So he or she who believes in Yahushua becomes part of that seed. Yes. 
So, and I think that's a fulfillment too um, of the next verse. The, the verse after the one you were talking about has been almost fully fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I would say once he comes back, it will be fully fulfilled because we're going to be in the kingdom. So that, that would be the ultimate Baraka um, of being part of the seed of Abraham. But yeah, um, you know, so I've seen, a, I see a lot of prophecy in this chapter. This, this, this is one chapter that comes to mind where I usually use against people that have not accepted the Messiah. Yet, and I usually use this chapter to show that clearly uh, Yahusha is written all over this chapter. Um, so, I mean, this, this is one of those chapters I usually go to. And we'll see later on as we get to the end of Genesis, there's also a chapter that talks about him um, as, as the line of Judah and as the one that a uh, uh, lawgiver will not fail from his loins. So we'll see later on in the last one or two chapters of Bereshith once we get there, who references him too there also. Um, I'm trying to think there was anything else that was really important I wanted to kind of bring up. Um, um, I find an interesting difference between the Masoretic and the Septuagint with lamb versus sheep. So that's kind of interesting thing for me. I, I never noticed that before, but there's like uh, the, instead of lamb, it says sheep in the Septuagint. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and, oh yeah, of course, the stars of the heaven, that's still being fulfilled too. I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven. That's still being fulfilled. Technically, that hasn't been fully fulfilled yet until we get to the sea of glass and revelations. And it talks about, you know, uh, an innumerable multitude that can't be numbered. And in my opinion, that's when the stars of the heaven prophecy gets fully fulfilled when there is as many of the seed of Abraham as the angels. And so because the angels can't be numbered, we don't even know how many there is in heaven. Um, so, but that's kind of what I got from that prophecy there in verse 17 also. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything else. Um, I think I think that's it. So, um, Brother Dennis, Sister Sally, do you have anything you would like to add? <coughs> no. Hmm, only about what you uh, said. You, know. you got something, Sister Sally? No, Dennis can Dennis can go ahead. Okay. I was just going to mention what you said about what he called the, the mountain for Yahuwah <clears throat> was in the mountain. Yep. Yep. And he had to trust Yahuwah because in the substitution it says, go to, you will go to a place which I will tell you. So he, he had to put a little bit more trust in Yahuwah than usual. Usually Yahuwah would tell him verbatim, okay, you're going to go into this land. You're going to go over there. And he's like, I will tell you the land that you will go to and make that sacrifice. So that, that, that's a, that's really a proof of Abraham's belief and his trust, how much he trusted the father in that instance. And that's the type of trust we should have. If I was to spiritualize that, that's the type of trust we should have for him. All right. He, he's going to tell us where to go. We should not worry about it. You know, he, he, he know his ways are higher than our ways. So we shouldn't be uh, scared where he's going to take us. So if I was going to try to spiritualize that. That's how I would take it. In, in my opinion, basically, you know, have a hundred percent trust in the father and the son that wherever we go in life, he's leading us. He's going to tell us where to go, uh, obey his voice. Um, so, but yeah, that's good stuff. That's tube stuff. I should say, I need to stop saying good. Um, that's, uh, that's, I'd also like to mention that in verse 18, it says, and in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be Baruch because you have obeyed my voice. And I believe this is talking about since the Messiah comes from his seed line, that the Messiah is the Baraka of the entire nations of the earth because all people everywhere will learn of him 
during the millennium and and they will all be barah. Yeah. And I I to piggyback off of that, that actually I, I kinda wonder that word for nations there is ethnos. I kinda wonder. Because that would be really interesting if that's referring to all ethnicities in one seed as Paul talks about. There's it probably not, is. You know, he says there's not multiple seeds, there's one seed that all through Messiah are part of. So I wonder I want to look into the uh the uh Septuagint with the Strongs here. So what verse is that? That's um sixteen, 18. seven, eighteen. Yeah, I could probably figure this out real quick because it's probably the same Greek word as the New Testament where it says to preach to all ethnos. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Ethnos, ethnicity. Mm -hmm. So instead of physical countries like we would think nations of in modern English, this is referring to a people group. All people, all people of the all, earth. All peoples of the earth, whether you're black, white, Spanish, uh, doesn't matter what color, all, all ethnicities would be uh, Baruch through the seed of Abraham, which is fulfilled with mm -hmm. Yahushua Messiah. He is the seed of the woman. You know, he is, he is the seed of the woman that crushes the head of the serpent or the seed of the serpent. So, yeah, I mean, that, that is a great one to bring up is, is that all of them would be Baruch. And yeah, the fulfillment of that is in the kingdom. You know, when, when we're all going to be there together. And it even says um, um, he redeemed from all nations, tribes, and tongues. And I think Ethnos is in that verse from Revelations too, if I'm not mis mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, all nations, tribes, and tongues. This is something I wanted to bring up because there's certain belief systems in the Hebrew roots community that are, you know, you uh, you can't be saved if you're unless you're a physical descendant of the original Israelites. So I kind of want to make a point of this that salvation is for every ethnicity. It's not just for physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's for so everybody. I, I want to make that point. So it says in Revelation seven verse nine. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every ethnos and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And so, again, this, if I'm not mistaken, this would be ethnos here in Revelation 7, 9. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. So you go to the Bears Greek lexicon here. Nations. Yep. Ethnos. Again. So again, this is not talking about a physical country. This is talking about all ethnicities, all people groups. That's what it's talking about. So, and actually an interesting thing to notice in the Orthodox Jewish Bible, they actually put ethnic groups for this word. So they actually translate probably the best out of I would say all of them um, in that particular word, the Orthodox Jewish Bibles actually uh, in certain, certain times it will actually put ethnic groups. So yeah, peoples. So yeah, they actually do it the best, but anyway, so uh, enough of my rant. Um, we got like less than a minute. Thank you for joining us today. Next, we're going to be doing a chapter from our Yub study or Yub study. So please stay tuned. Ayub. Yep, Ayub. So Shalom, thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for our Ayub study. Shalom.